Hello and welcome back to Podcasting is Practice. I'm David, my pronouns are he and him. I'm Jamie, my pronouns are he and him. Hi, I'm Rob and my pronouns are he and him. And I'm Alistair, my pronouns are also he and him. And we are joined once again by friend of the show, Lila. Hello, sorry, I'm back. <laughs> my pronouns are she and her. <laughs> you don't need to sound so resigned to the fact, like... I'm sorry, David, are you telling someone else not to sound so resigned? Yes, yes it's my job on this podcast. <laughs> I thought that was quite upbeat, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm quite excited because I feel like I've levelled up to like being on the, the grown-up podcast now that I'm on one with Rob. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this one isn't about piss. Yeah. <laughs> or at least as far as oh. I'm aware, it's not about piss because there's a section of the show notes that are off limits to me. So. <laughs> you know, I it's can like... find a way to make it about piss. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> you've been, you know, when you've been seeing someone for a little while and it's like, oh, you introduce them to your friends and it's like, oh, that's all going great. And then you have to introduce them to the parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then your dad talks about finance for an hour. <laughs> yeah, that does sound <laughs> about right. <laughs> Yes, Dad, Margin Call was a good film. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very, very weird metaphor. I feel like, do I have to give you all pocket money at the end of this episode or something? Or? No, that's James's job. I wouldn't say no. <laughs> <laughs> so in lieu of pocket money, what horrors do you have for us? Well, I was going to do like a whole intro bit, like with some some casual stuff, some nice little nuggets. And then this afternoon, uh, Jamie messaged me. So uh, instead, we just have a main course, but then we have what I can only call an incredible dessert, <laughs> which is a great, great article read uh, that I'm very much looking forward to uh, to sharing w- with all of you. Oh, I'm excited. Uh, but before but before that, like I said, uh, I want to do some vegetables first because this is something, once again, that I've been interested in for a little bit. And I wanted to talk about uh, leveling up and specifically what that means in practice and what it looks like when something gets or does not, in this case, particularly get started, sort of, kind of. Um, so, you know, just as as you'll remember, leveling up was the fact that people found out that a lot of parts of the UK were actually not very happy. Indeed, there were no jobs and that was all bad. And that, you know, and then they formed this red wall thing, which wasn't a red wall, as it turns out. Um, And then people, specifically the Conservative Party, decided that this situation could no longer be sustained. And therefore, we were going to bring more wealth and prosperity throughout the nation, uh, specifically in the... Citation needed. Exactly. (laughs) So what I wanted to talk about today is a very specific example of um, what that looks like in in practice, Uh, because, uh, you know, even before leveling up, there was George Osborne's March of the Makers, uh, if you will, where where the UK was going to. Yeah, he called it the March (laughs) of the Makers. That sounds made up. Yeah, that sounds like something George Lucas made and then told everyone to forget about. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and of course, these things were never designed uh, um, to be like public ownership or anything. They were going to be all of these were going to be public private partnerships with the uh, public handing in a big wad of money and then the private sector essentially running off giggling, uh, which is well, so- I mean, the specifically le- with regards to leveling up, that wasn't supposed to last outside of the fucking election period of 2019. Not, not really, but they, they made some goes of it in, in some places. And the thing I wanted to talk about today is uh, what that looks like in practice. Um, and it's a company called British Vault. Um, v- V-O-L-T, because I've been accused of mispronouncing that in the past, by the way. Uh, <laughs> according to uh, Boris Johnson, would be a, a cornerstone of his global green industrial revolution. And it does actually, this particular factory does get... Uh, an opening remark in the actual uh, government leveling up leveling up white paper um, and in which they were promising that even Northumberland would get a new train line so people could get Ooh. to the British Vault factory which is, is a, a giga factory to make car batteries electric car batteries to be precise they made some absolutely mental promises about Northumberland like I hello I live in Newcastle um, but like there were some like new Tory MPs who made insane promises that they would get the metro to go out to their constituency and it's like oh, yeah. mate you live on the cliffs what are you talking about <laughs> like, yeah um, so... Richard, Richard Holden Richard Holden claims he's going to get the metro to extend to concert along the yeah. old Doom walk 
and like the Doom Walk is wide enough to get maybe one train track down it so you could send one train at a time <laughs> it would have to like double and go both ways um, it's just it's insane and it would yeah. also cross like a bunch of roads and uh, like valleys where they took the bridge down decades ago it's it's just absolutely like he's clearly never been and looked at it he just knows that once upon a time the trains went along that bit and so now he can easily put trains back there if he wants you know when you when you've taken all of your model train tracks off of the table and you put them in the box mm-hmm. and then like a few years later you go oh do you know what I'm going to put my train set together again and you get it all out of the box exactly where you left it and yeah. it's all good again and you're having a great time let, making the choo-choo trains go up and down the tracks <laughs> pretty much yeah <laughs> yeah exactly well in the meantime your mean uncle Beecham has come around and actually smashed up your fucking train set but you know um <laughs> But yeah, I mean, look, there is a there is a sense that like you know, uh, building a, a gigafactory for electric car batteries is not a bad thing. Like, it's good to have these things manufactured locally because like we're gonna need them. And specifically, if this thing were ever to become a reality, as and that's somewhat in question at the moment, to put it mildly, um, you know, it would provide probably quite a lot of reasonably high paying uh, green industrial jobs, exactly of the type of variety that in a deprived area you would think would be very good to have. Um, or somewhere in the start of this process, the uh, executive chairman of British Vault, a guy called Peter Rolton, said they did a local jobs fair where uh, people were queuing around the block to get you know, even hypothetical jobs at this thing, which hasn't been built yet. Um, According to him, some parents even took their kids out of school to attend. That's what it means for the area. Now, whether or not he's lying or not, I think is kind of secondary, but I do think that, like, if you live in such an area where it's, you know, the post-Thatcherite revolution and then, you know, the casual neglect by the new Labour Party, like, there is a good case to be made for putting something like this in an area like that, Uh, especially when we're talking about electric batteries for cars and trucks and buses and all that stuff like that this is fundamentally like purely surface level this is a good thing to be doing it's it's i think had corbyn come into power this is what they would have been doing as well but i would hope a lot better than uh, the current goings on at british vault I mean, uh, it feels like at best it was... It, I mean, uh, the vibe I get off of anything with fucking levelling up slapped across the fucking front is that, like, in this instance, for example, it would be a Potem- Potemkin factory. Like, they just got levelling up, like, slapped across the front. You got Boris Johnson giving a big old thumbs up, and then that's kind of it. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, look, basically, like, green batteries as a thing are still, like, cool and good, and we need them. Uh, basically... The world is trying to transition to electric cars. We'll need a ton of good quality batteries to do that. And like barring a total revolution in public transport across the UK, electric cars are probably the best bet within the capitalist system that we currently have. So we'll need them. And there's also a new law on the books uh, now that says all cars uh, sold in the UK from 2030 must have batteries. So either full electric or like mixed like a Prius or something. So... Uh, you know, these things are going to be needed and they're going to be needed in great numbers. And like the UK car industry as a general sector is just dying on its ass. And like a transition being a front runner on the electric car model might be a thing that could potentially save it, basically speaking. Is it yeah. fair to say that it's dying? Like, is it not already pretty comprehensively fucking dead? No, there's still a few, few places. Uh, um, Red Car comes to mind. I think that's still a going concern. Jaguar Land Rover, Aston Martin, Lotus. There's still like the UK still has like car, quite serious car building uh, plot, yeah. but a lot of it's them, moving. We still fill them top gear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't I'm tip, tipping my drink out for Saab right now. <laughs> <laughs> Bought by a Dutch yeah, guy. I mean, electric. End. Electric cars are the future. Just look at, like, Tesla. Exactly. Oh, no. <laughs> future which is approaching us all very, very quickly. Look out quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who, was that, who was that celebrity that got burned by their Tesla, like, today? That was... Oh, I don't know. That sounds fun, though. Yeah. Tell me, tell me <laughs> I'll look this. it up. <laughs> People burned by Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> this list is incomplete. You can help by expanding it. <laughs> Teslas have uh, have two batteries. They have the big, like, futuristic electric car battery that you need to invade, like, South America for. But then they also have a normal car battery in them. 
which is what runs the uh, the computer and the electric doors and everything. And that battery is charged by the big, like, fancy battery, which is charged by the mains. But when that battery, like, when the big fancy battery fills up, it stops charging from the mains, but it also then stops charging the smaller battery. <laughs> Because it only charges the smaller battery if the car's moving or if it's if it's charging from the main. So once it's full, it just stops. And so if you leave your Tesla in the garage for a couple of weeks, the, the car battery dies and you can't get into the car and you can't start the car. And the only way to fix it is take the bonnet up, like take the bonnet off and then like dismantle like whole bits of like the, the air conditioner and everything to get at the actual car battery underneath so you can put jump leads on it. Fucking amazing. Oh God. I bricked my Tesla. <laughs> yeah, this is so. This I've found this isn't recent. Well, it's kind of recent. It's from t- the July twenty second, which says a Taiwanese race car driver was severely injured after being trapped in his burning Tesla. So um, it happens a lot. <laughs> <laughs> now, children, we will be having Elon Musk for dessert. So. Um... <laughs> 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 Um, yeah, so basically speaking, the estimate is uh, for for all the cars that Britain needs, especially with that new new law about mandating uh, electric ba- battery electric cars or quasi electric cars, uh, we would need ninety to one hundred gigawatt hours of battery life a year. Uh, currently, the UK produces less than five, and we need hmm. substantially more. Yeah, so uh, the British Volt idea was to produce way more, about twenty five to thirty percent of of the total UK demand, so about uh, 30 gigawatt hours uh, a year. Um, this is huge. Like, this is game-changing for any region. Like, the estimates were between five and 8,000 jobs. It would be relatively high-skilled. It would be techy. It would be in a, in a re- region that's not doing so well. And if it were to be real at the end, it might still be, but probably not. It would essentially, it would be the fourth largest building in the United Kingdom kingdom as a whole like just surface area it would be a massive giant fuck off box where they produce all the fancy car batteries um so shame and- cube yes um enter british fault basically the idea as i said is to create a giant uk battery plant near Blythe in northumberland uh which would be the, the very large building it would have a lot of stuff and it would create enough batteries per year to me- to power about three hundred thousand new cars which is you know that's that's a fairly substantial amount of um car uh, it would the idea was that it would start production in 2023 so next year so in a couple of days essentially um and unfortunately they haven't produced any yet uh said quasi quarteng when he was still the business secretary uh british vault is is exactly what leveling up looks like um and i can only say look how right he turned out to be uh because in reality it tries to apply the same principles of um silicon valley app development horseshit coupled with free money um and try to combine that sort of idea of let's lose a lot of money very fast and try to transpose that into the reality of let's actually build things in a in a in a yeah. deprived area it feels it feels like the first step that they're going to fall over is the fact that they actually have to produce a product yes yeah that is weirdly enough that is exactly the stage where the whole thing fell down well that and the damn fact that- you mean you mean this actually has to fulfill a function rather than just being stupid ass bullshit that you can just say it does whatever and no one can really ki- no one who really matters is going to check but it turns yeah. out if you if you design a battery or make batteries those things actually quite complicated when it comes to like getting it right especially when you talk about electric cars what they should have done is said the battery had ai and then people (laughs) would just give them endless money and limitless time (laughs) this factory would have been hugely expensive as you can imagine Uh, total estimated costs were about 3.8 billion uh, pounds Uh, the idea would be that they would get about two-thirds of that from private investors by at some point going public on the london stock exchange and the rest would be subsidies or otherwise uh, uh, acquired and the main thing they did with the money that they did get from a number of investors that we'll talk about in a bit is they bought um this site near blythe this is the this is the main asset that they actually have that is under their control it's 93 hectares um and it's an incredible like just purely on its like 
loca- location stuff it's an incredible site for doing exactly this like it's not only them uh, a, a very large chinese battery company a couple of the others like everybody wants this site specifically to produce uh ca- these new car batteries to build a uh, a gigafactory it's near uh, a big deep water port it has very good rail links uh, there's links to offshore wind plus the uh, hydro energy connector from norway comes on shore there so you can build a lot of batteries for electric cars with renewable energy thus doing the whole double whammy thing it's it's purely on its geography this is an incredible site and it is where you would exactly put this thing so and so naturally naturally our only option was to give it to a bunch of clowns who were starting out rather than an established maker of batteries uh, pretty much we gave it to two swedish guys one of whom was convicted for fraud and the other was a uh, was a bond trader from abu dhabi <laughs> never trust a swede Great. that's what we need to learn <laughs> <laughs> vegetable or otherwise <laughs> what kind of what kind of fraud did he do? Uh, I'm not entirely sure what kind of fraud he did. I do know that we, he was convicted for four years and then later had his sentence drawn down by to six months or something. But you know, this was only, of course, found out after everybody had given this guy a lot of money and made him co CEO of the battery company. Oh, whoops! <laughs> How yeah. did that money get there? <laughs> was he pretending to be Italian? <laughs> <laughs> Um, of course, like, um, so they bought this site for about five million pounds from Northumberland Council, who at least in, you know, stark contrast to, I think, councils everywhere, where were smart enough to insert a few clauses into the contract saying, if you don't actually build the factory or do something useful, we have the legal right to take the land back. Uh, would it surprise you to learn that British Fault really wants to get rid of those clauses in the, in the contract by now? <laughs> My God, my God, an actual clause in a contract that says you actually have to do the job we want you to do. <laughs> and, then having, and then the fucking other party having an aneurysm that they're expected to actually fulfill any of the clauses in their fucking contract. Yeah, someone's I mean, never worked to the MOD. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't worry about it, though, because, like, uh, the people who are putting up the money to build the massive, massive factory itself, um, at a cost of about $1.7 billion, um, they didn't actually invest in the company. Uh, they just said, we'll build the thing, uh, and then, like, uh, we'll lease it back to you. So it's essentially what they did was, like, a PFI construction, but for this battery Ugh. factory. Um <laughs> And the UK government promised uh, about £100 million in funding. Uh, I say promised. They didn't actually hand the money over. Um, uh, but that would, was going to come from the Automotive Transformation Fund now. So this is, of course, what the what the government does these days, and especially with regards to levelling up. It's not the government's job or the state's job to own anything. It's just like they put in enough taxpayer or, or, or like state capital to, like, tempt private money in it's like fish bait like you hook uh, the site with like 100 million pounds of government money and then you hope that private money follows in afterwards because they feel secure that the government is also on the line uh, essentially so like i said uh, there's a 1.7 billion investment from uh, giant asset manager aberdeen on the uh, its property management company a company called tritax which sounds like a bond villain of some variety um so and like i said they didn't put money in, into british sounds itself. like someone who runs three forums <laughs> 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 it's called tritax because that's the number of taxes they're going to avoid paying <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but there were also people who invested in the company itself. Uh, mainly among them was uh, mining ex- mining giant with sterling human rights reputation, uh, Glencore. They put about £40 million uh, pounds in. And um, a big uh, equipment leasing company called Ashtad also put £10 million in, presumably under the expectation that the factory would lease a lot of the equipment from Ashtad, thereby easily making its its money back. I don't know that, but that's a pretty, pretty safe assumption. Um yeah. However, and I should stress, the, the, the government said and the, both the corporation said as well, we will not give you everything up front. We'll give you money um, once certain milestones are passed, once this thing is actually uh, up and running. So, all right, fair enough. You know, that's, that's, not, that's actually better than I expect from the British government. I mean, it, it really is staggering that our expectations are so fucking low that very, yeah. very simple like precautions like saying we actually want you to do the job and we would like you to continue doing the job once you get to certain checkpoints 
is like <laughs> staggering. I really, really am surprised that they've actually put this stuff in. <laughs> uh, like I said, uh, it, it was being run or originally not anymore. They've both left uh, by uh, two Swedish guys, uh, Lars Karlström, uh, he of the convicted tax fraud, um, <laughs> left, by the way, quickly after this was found out and then founded a totally unrelated company in Italy called Italvolt. Not related to British <laughs> <laughs> The other guy uh, who stuck around much longer is a guy called Oral Najari, um, who has absolutely zero car or electric manufacturing experience. He was a corporate bond seller in Sweden with an office in Abu Dhabi. Mm. Uh, there's also a guy, the, the chairman called Peter Rolton. Uh, I mentioned him at the start. He was the guy who said that people were queuing up around the block to get jobs here. Um, and But he, while being Including chairman... Including children. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he remained the head of the Rolton Group, which would be a supplier to British Ford. So he was the chairman of the company. He was the chairman of both the customer and the consumer company. Had this all worked out uh, as planned? The main thing is, though, and this is like this is where you get sort of into the more like Silicon Valley scam thing. Is if you build, as you can well imagine, if you say, "Well, we're going to build this giant fuck off factory. It's going to cost billions to put all the plant in and build the buildings, and you know, get the machines that make the battery and and hire all, uh, get all the cobalt on site. Like it's a very and the lithium. It's a very expensive fucking proposition. So what everybody on the planet does when they build one of these gigafactories is they first go to a big established car company like uh, Jaguar Land Rover owned by Tata, or they go to Nissan red car uh you know or bmw or volvo or whoever and they say we are going to build this giant factory this is some of the battery technology that we've developed that is proven if we build this factory can you like guarantee that you will buy from us in the coming years once the thing is up that's how it goes everywhere in the world except for in britain uh this thing started with like no confirmed <laughs> it's called orders. british vault for a reason <laughs> yeah <laughs> Basically, you had you only had um, two smaller car companies, Aston Martin and Lotus. They both signed non-binding memorandums of understanding. Uh, <laughs> basically, just like, printing um, out, just printing out a piece of paper that just says, "Sure, why not?" <laughs> pretty much, like. You know, not unreasonably, they're smaller. Like, they can't financially commit to something like this anyway. But, yeah. you know, they... they don't, yes, don't quote me, but maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, essentially, they went so far as to say, sure, send us a sample. And if it's, you know, if it's good, we'll take another look at it. Um, I see a problem of uh, uh, erupting there, like... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, essentially things in this thing start going sideways very, very fast. Basically, from the moment they started, like the company was was, was set up, it started losing like money hand over fist. Um, and already in 2019, at least according to the Financial Times, uh, its internal accounts were warning that material uncertainties may cast significant doubt over the company's ability as a going concern. So this was already... Is that good? <laughs> Yeah, that's very good. That that means everything is a, is a, is a great success. Um, in the I same, mean, I was going to say by the standards of Britain, yeah, that is that is perfectly normal. <laughs> <laughs> And like, like I said, the hundred million that the British government had said uh, in in state aid that you know, by the way, state aid that w the British government could now freely spend because it was you know we were released from the shackles of the EU, so we could spend all this money however we wanted. Um, yeah. so what happened is British state like I said they said well we're not going to give you just 100 million we want you to do certain things before we give you like the first installment um, specifically in this case they said well once you get like um, the battery manufacturing machines the big very expensive machines from Korea and Germany and you put them on site then you'll get 30 million from us the first 30 million so this is not up front um, there are significant questions by the way whether or not British Vault ever had the money to pay their suppliers in the first place. And I'm not even talking about like the big expensive battery making machines. I'm talking about putting the actual building up because to this day, I'm not sure whether or not there's actually a building or even a foundation on the site. I'm genuinely, I can't work it out whether or not there are, you know, if, if you're from, from this area, if you're from Blythe and like, Right in, like, because I genuinely don't know if there's anything on. on, on yeah, because the local look correspondent. It up on street view. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> someone, someone goes out there. It's just a single dude with a hard hat and a shovel, and it's like, yeah, no, yeah, it's uh, any day now. 
Could be up. <laughs> Well, I mean, there's not only, like, there's multiple unpaid suppliers, including these, like, battery machine manufacturers. They haven't supplied the machines because they haven't been paid. They're not the only ones. Other construction companies that were supposed to build the giant fuck-off building have have pulled out or canceled contracts or, you know, um, there have been significant delays in starting overall construction. Like I said, I think there might be a foundation but I'm not entirely sure. It could just be a muddy field. The Guardian called the site a muddy Look, field. Look, that guy with the shovel is working very, very hard. <laughs> and that's one more job than there would have been. So I, just like, I like that we've discovered Schrodinger's factory and we actually need someone to go and observe it. <laughs> or we can say whether it's there or not. Uh, However, and this is, again, this is very sort of Silicon Valley style, um, despite not having solid contracts with any car manufacturer or indeed um, an actual building to make the batteries in, uh, British Fall did hire nearly 300 staff, including operational people who literally can't do any work until the site is up and running, but they were already there on full pay sort of on the expectation that, well, we have them, and then once the building's there, and how hard can it be to build the UK's fourth largest you know, building that can't be can't be difficult, essentially. Um, at some point, and I can't quite work out when in the story, uh, British Fold did manage to get like a few uh, sample batteries to, to Lotus and Aston Martin, and they sent like a few on spec to uh, to other man- manufacturers. Uh, but those were all, none of those were created on site. They were created in a previously existing government funded laboratory called the UK Battery Industrialization Center. So any technology they were developing was just done in state research facilities, not in you know the brave world of the of the private sector. Shocking That's, stuff. Um, yeah, I've just I've just actually looked for the factory address to find out where it is so I can try and street view it. Um, I've just found the UK Battery well, Industrialisation Centre. I mean, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not doing anything else, am I? Um, so I, <laughs> that's in Coventry. Um, there's no factory that I can find. There's a little office in a business park in Blythe. But that's, that's yes. all I can find for yep, British that's folk. it. That's the baby. <laughs> but don't worry about it. They also have a very expensive corporate address in Mayfair in the centre of London. So don't worry about ah. it. It's fine. I mean, look, look that, that office, it's like a clown car. There's like 300 staff crammed in there, I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that office in Mayfair will pay for itself once they put some hotels on it. <laughs> 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 I mean, they did try to like drum up uh, business. Let me read you a little bit from the Financial Times. Some would be clients say the company's approaches were cack handed. Last year, British Fault. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Last year, British Vault contacted one car maker offering prototype cells that it would be ready to deliver within weeks. The car maker, which already had mm. several of its own in house prototypes, was nevertheless curious to see the new technology and agreed. Months of silence followed. Eventually. <laughs> Eventually, British Fold contact them again, out of the blue, offering the exact same prototypes. The car maker patiently agreed, but once again heard nothing back and eventually gave up sending chasing messages. That is that is the quintessential business experience in my in my opinion. <laughs> I mean, once you start looking into some of these guys, I mean, apart from the fraudster, the guy from Abu Dhabi it does get even more incredible. It's like in January of uh, last year, 2021, that when there were already like some quite serious questions about the viability of this whole enterprise, uh, British Vault tried to calm everybody down by announcing a new uh, chief financial officer, a guy called William Reynolds, but he was gone uh, less than six months later. And according to a piece in the Times I read, now leads a startup in Puerto Rico and was a contractor rather than a full-time member of staff (laughs) i just i love when i have a panic attack i do love to have a new financial officer and it does always show me right out just curious rob do you happen to know if um, puerto rico has some sort of extradition treaty with the uk i do i do like this uh this notion that oh we're, the problem we're having is that we can't actually build the fucking things that uh, our prospective clients would actually want. So what we should do is is just change one of the fucking freaks in the big chairs because uh, <laughs> he was clearly doing all of the fucking work of building a building. <laughs> there will have been some like amazingly overpaid consultant that came in and told them to do that as well. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Oh yeah, one hundred. This will give people all of their faith back in you. Yeah. Look, but I want to calm you all if down. They wanted, they, if you want, if you want to seem like cutting edge and techie for the twenty, like the twenty first century, 
then what they really need is like to get the, the building put up by like a Minecraft YouTuber or something. <laughs> <laughs> But I do want to... Bridge like, Vault brought to you by Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, uh, I do want to, like, put you all at ease and, like, not to worry too much because they did appoint a new CFO. He just lives in uh, the UAE and he won't. He says he won't move to London uh, until 2023. <laughs> I mean, feel. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah essentially like this, but this is not the only thing like because this was so inherently part of the whole like um, leveling up mission and, and because it was quoted like I said in the leveling up report and everything it they it did have its backers inside the, the UK government uh, let me quote again from the Financial Times one minister in Boris Johnson's government would regularly phone wary car makers begging them to meet British Volt executives according to two people <laughs> familiar <laughs> I mean, the last time the last time one of these uh, guys at British Vault contacted contacted one of the car makers, they just turned up with a bunch of fucking a like double uh, A batteries and just. <laughs> I showed you my memorandum of understanding. Please respond. <laughs> <laughs> just running down to like British car makers, just pelting like. D cell batteries at them to get their attention. <laughs> I mean, and again, like this is it's one of the most British things because of course in comparison to everybody else, these things were like vastly underestimating and underfunding the potential costs. Like the European Union, like several countries in it are doing similar things with gigafactories, but they have like literally seven or eight or ten times the state backing in terms of finance to get these things off the ground. Like Britain just decided to do it to do it on the cheap with like a hundred million of promised funding not actual funding because like I, I need to stress the government still hasn't paid out a cent of the 100 million uh, uh, pounds and that's part of the reason there's a gigantic problem um, at the moment because at least according to ground shaps at the moment the right milestones uh, haven't been reached yet and we're about to get new austerity so I very much doubt like any of this promised 100 million is ever going to get um, uh, you know handed in so uh however after some funding from different companies was confirmed and and like was transferred into the actual bank account uh the remaining f- f- co-founder oral najari the uh du- abu dhabi trader uh he stepped down in august of this year saying now is the right time to pass over the reins <laughs> Rains on what, you fucking idiot? <laughs> the industrial Red- park. Me <laughs> after I opened the dishwasher. He's, he's, <laughs> I mean, he's more of an ideas guy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Just when you're on a stage course and it's hurtling towards a ravine, now is the time to hand over the reins. <laughs> <laughs> this is the energy of, like, any fucked up Kickstarter thing, except everyone is sitting on lawyers' retainers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's just the it's like the the tech world equivalent of a goon project. Yeah. <laughs> I'll build the factory. <laughs> I reckon though it would actually get done better if they kickstarted it because what would happen is it would all fall apart and then some annoyed, really nerdy backers would be like, "Well, we're just going to go and build it anyway," because that's what always yeah. happens with video mm-hmm. games. <laughs> It is also you put me in charge of the treasury. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just imagining now it's like fucking Star Citizen, and they're just pre-selling JPEGs of batteries to people around the world. <laughs> yeah, and then and then when uh, they get a follow-up email saying, "Have you got any more of those JPEGs?" They just don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> it can't even can't even follow in the footsteps of fucking Star Citizen. <laughs> so it is also by this time by the way that uh, Aston Martin one of the two with the memorandum of understanding um, said that the battery tech progression that they'd been promised was slower than expected and it had not received the sample products that were requested <laughs> <laughs> That's slow, slower than expected is like really passive aggressive there like I think <laughs> like literally nothing's happening well this is slower than expected yeah just circling back round to the uh, battery situation <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
in in an in, in an interview, this is around August of the, of this year as well. Uh, uh, to Business Insider, the chairman, uh, got the Rolton said that the first batteries would now at best be produced mid twenty twenty five instead of the end of twenty twenty four as was originally projected. Now, if you're a big car maker and you need to like retool your own plant because like you need to put the new electric batteries into the new cars you're building, this is the kind of you know eighteen month delay from your battery maker that you love to see and that gives you confidence to like sign a hundred and like a billion quids worth of contract with them which would really bail them out at this point uh, because this is according to the Guardian by August 2022 the cash flow problems had gotten like so bad that pretty much all construction and other physical work uh, was essentially severely limited until February of next year, uh, February 2023, uh, while it seeks to get new funding. This, according to an internal presentation as seen by The Guardian, was called the life support function or option as presented. <laughs> just sit, sitting in on that meeting and just patiently raising my hand. Is that good? <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of like five guys in suits sitting in like a shed on a muddy field somewhere outside Bly saying, I thought we're supposed to be a factory here by now. Already talking about putting everything on life support, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> They did. Uh, I, I say muddy shed. I should correct myself. Uh, they did, in the meantime, take up a lease of the 2.8 million new field house uh, mansion near Blythe as uh, its executive office space. So, you know, there might not have been a factory, but the guys in the suits had a very comfy time and, uh, and a bubble bath. I saw some nice pictures of it. It looked very comfortable. Look, those 300 employees have to go somewhere during the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, spouses are going to start asking questions. <laughs> Maybe this whole thing was yeah. just like a scam for people to have affairs on the on the backside. <laughs> you can't you you can't make futuristic batteries inside a Sherlock style mind palace. They tried. <laughs> 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 So, I mean, it is at this point in the second half of 2022 that things genuinely really start falling apart. Um, at the start Oh, now of, things start getting bad. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, look, they were pretty much, like I said, they were on life support, but, you know, I think things are going slightly beep at this point. Um, because at the beginning of, of, well, when we're recording, at the beginning of November, so either last week or the week before, uh, Glencore, the, the big friendly mining giant, uh, put in like five more million at the start of the month. Uh, which was has essentially bought them enough time five more weeks to get like either the government money or some other money from somewhere or like but this is the last five million they have like the staff has already taken like a massive pay cut uh to, to even get this money this far um and okay, but they should be able to survive that massive pay cut since they were being paid far too much money to do fuck all as far as i can tell <laughs> but i mean i'm sure there were like, like some what's actual stopping like... them from just getting a second job to do during the day <laughs> <laughs> yeah. somebody checked the amount of avocados being shipped to bly since these guys uh, set up shop um <laughs> But like, if had Glencore not put in the five million at the start of the month, um, they would already have needed to call in the administrators, and the whole thing would have literally gone uh, bankrupt. Essentially, uh, this is from the Times. The company is understood to be down to its last five million pounds, with a monthly wage bill of two and a half million for the three hundred uh, executives and R and D engineers on the books, at an average salary what? of a hundred thousand pounds each a year. That is unlikely to get the business business through Christmas. That's, that's the average salary. That's yes. insane. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, and they currently, they have engaged another private bank uh, to like essentially do a, a, a sort of des desperate whip round with private equity investors to see if they can find anybody to save it. But, you know, as we frequently mention this podcast, the money is no longer free. So that might be a bit of a, a bit of a problem. Um, and there were like some rumors that Tata Steel would buy the whole thing out and like turn it into its own because the, like I said the site is very very good and maybe they wanted the site itself and would just buy British Vault to buy the site so, it's so uh, funny to me that like this company that has made nothing done nothing produced nothing except like a single guy in a hard hat digging a ditch in like Northumbria and the only thing that is actually worth anything that might interest uh potentially interest another company to buy them is the ditch 
<laughs> well, I mean, there's one other thing that uh, Tata Steel thought would be interesting, uh, and that was the uh, 100 million in government support. But the government is saying, well, we're probably not going to give that money. And Tata's like, well, if you don't give me 100 million, then I'm not taking over British Vault. Uh, so it's actually like right before Christmas in, in a couple of weeks, we are going to find out whether or not British Vault will be rescued, whether or not this factory will be built by the people who own it now, whether or not this thing will keep existing, or whether or not, much like everything else to do with leveling up, it was just a giant sucking hole where a bunch of consultants got very rich for, you know, literally no good fucking reason. I, yeah, I'll be that one, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, like, look, the, the 100 million as promised by the UK government, like, it wouldn't have helped British Fault, even had they had, like, a credible plan and some buys for the batteries and, you know, been a functional company of some variety. Um, it wouldn't have helped them that, like, having several governments collapse in one year and therefore several different ministers who needed to sign up and sign off for everything wouldn't have helped them at all. But basically, they were trying to, like, build an actual physical plant one of the largest ever to be created in the uk um with the same reason and logic of a very shitty app company from the free money age like if these guys could have you know issued a bitcoin they would have i'm, I'm fairly <laughs> confident that they would have you know done done british coin we talked about it a while back that thing oh, it'd be Volt coin. that's what they'd fucking call it mm. and it'd mm. be insufferable <laughs> well, I mean, you might still get an Ital Vault uh, coin, you know, <laughs> and uh, Hope Springs Eternal. Um, and if you want to just, like, look at the contrast, there's, there's a company in Sweden called North Vault. I'm not saying these people are particularly original with their naming. Um, so far as I know, nothing to do with the, the people behind British Vault. Um, but it is backed substantially and with much more money and much more sense by the actual Swedish state. And before they started building a giant factory and, you know, shipping lithium, um, they actually secured partnerships with Volvo, Volkswagen and BMW. And this factory is now up and running and making things because, you know, they said, well, we need the batteries. Let's do it the way it should be done. Uh, un un so, unlike Britain. Yeah, it's, it is it is fun that uh, the government or governments that we've had are so vehemently anti-communist and as we know communism being the state doing things that they can't <laughs> even work up the energy to coerce or coax like private enterprise to do the jobs that nominally the state should be doing it's just failing at your like by your own standards you have failed at doing anything except, as we've established, digging a single ditch and funneling a bunch of money into some cons consultants' pockets. That's it. Well, I mean, it's, Which it's, in, ultimately is the role yeah. of the British state. So, yeah, exactly. job well done, everyone. The role of the British state is like more and more is to is not even to do this inefficient like handover of 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 government money to to private hands like through these middlemen. It's more and more. It's just like well, we'll just give money to the middlemen, and whether or not they do anything seems totally irrelevant like that's just that's not something that 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 seems to matter anymore like other 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 countries are doing stuff like this and you know it's all with the private sector and it's not you know state built or state led so you know it could be done much more efficiently and for much less money in the first place but at least there's some like oversight to any of this where in, in britain it really just seemed to only matter like if you if you know the right people or if you're inside kpmg or something like you will just get paid by the british state and and increasingly we don't even seem to demand that any result whatsoever is produced like nothing you can just make off with money at this point and in the meantime you know i started saying like look the uk still has some it's not as much as used to but still has you know car manufacturing in the uk it's still being done but like it's it's leaving slowly uh jaguar land rover has said it might shift its production site to slovakia um bmw has already moved um the electric mini and like all the components of that to china uh another much better equipped like way more functional startup that was going to make electric vans is moving to the united states and it's like well, yeah, if you're a car maker and you need to plan for the next five or ten years where you're going to build your big factories, like, why would you stay in the UK where you can't, when, like, they have one of the best sites in the world, but they give it to, like, a bunch of bozos? Why would you not leave? You know, why would you, why would you stay in this stupid fucking country? 
it, you know, and, and all this talk about leveling up and an industrial strategy for the North and the Midlands engine and, and all that type of shit. Like, none of it seems to, you know, if this is the idea that, that, that Britain would still have some manufacturing capacity of the green jobs that Labour's also talking about, you know, like... None of it seems to materialize. And I was thinking yet about that um, that announcement from Starmer um, in October where he t- he talked about, you know, uh, that there would be uh, Br- British energy. What was it again? British electricity was going to be some... Oh, st- uh, yeah. That yeah, thing. It's, a, it's, a, it's nationalized energy company, but not really... Exactly. Yeah, it was another just big stupid scam, wasn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, what um, we um, need is a British-owned, British-run middleman. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what if the government could generate profits for private company? <laughs> and, and my estimation is, is like even if we get like a a, a star a starmer government, these people they would have used the British energy non-state bank non-actor just you know provider of seed capital to private enterprise they would have used that to do this exact same thing i don't think there would have been a substantial difference between this form of leveling up than whether or not it's wearing like a blue or red rosette i think the modalities are still the same because both parties are like in hock to the same middlemen you know like i it's 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 fucking incredible like and and it, <laughs> to, towards the and i should state as well like um the estimate is is like if the uk wants to keep its car making its car manufacturing plant going the way it is and and you have this requirement to have all cars be at least partially electric by 2030 you need like i said you need about 100 gigawatt hours of batteries produced in the uk every year by 2030 and if we want to do that we don't need like one british volt we need at least three of them to provide that mandate and somehow i have some severe doubts whether or not you know that's actually gonna gonna happen uh especially on the my god what a ditch we're gonna have to show for it yeah (laughs) It's easy though, they just stack three of those ditches on top of each other and there you go. Yeah. <laughs> um and, and just to just to close this out before we 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 uh we get to the cert. Um when asked by The Guardian uh during his when he was still in place, uh why British Fault was essentially such a massive shit shit show, um then CEO Co CEO Najari said, Why are people not celebrating this true champion of UK PLC and its hopes of a successful energy transition? So like that's that's What? It, it it's the turning of like business into politics to the other for reverse it's like when asked why are you such a fucking shit show the ceo answered why aren't you celebrating the greatness of uk plc like w- what are we supposed to celebrate the fact that that there's a theory of a thing that won't be built like what what are we what are we what are we supposed to celebrate here we said like, we sent them the prototype cells what more the fuck do you want <laughs> yeah, I reckon we could celebrate if we got them to dig that ditch about six feet deep and then shoved them all in it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think, like, if leveling up's going to do anything, it's going to waste money on this. And if there's any physical product that actually exists, it'll be like a, a, a luxury flat or like a council-sponsored luxury flat to just, like, run over. Not in life. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that's that's the story of um, of British Fault, and like I said, um, around the first week of December, second week of December, so right before Christmas, we're going to find out whether or not um, you know leveling up is actually real, or whether or not we have to pack in whatever dream remains of Britain. Oh, a Christmas miracle! Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the British dream is dreaming of a ditch. <laughs> <laughs> Well, like like I said, that was that was a lot of vegetables. There were no little little nuggets up front either. But I did promise you um, dessert, and I think you, <laughs> in a ch- change of tone, because I was going to do like nuggets uh, about the latest going on of, at Twitter. But then Jamie sent me this, and it was too good. So now we're going to read from the Telegraph, um, <laughs> an article by. <laughs> An article by uh, Ed Cumming, and that is spelled how you think it is. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I would just change my name if it was that. (laughs) Uh, The article is called, Getting my Twitter blue tick was the happiest day of my life. Charging for the... (laughs) (laughs) This is already perfect. Jamie, what have you found? (laughs) 
I'm dreaming of a ditch and of being verified on Twitter.com. <laughs> Charging for them. Yeah, I, haven't, do- I haven't even read this. I just saw the headline. And I gave it straight to Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Charging for them will do untold damage. And the the, the subheader is: I still recall. I mean, how- at least at least he got that part right. <laughs> <laughs> I still recall how Twitter's verification system elevated me from peasant to lord. But Elon Musk is. <laughs> The lowest fucking rent aspiration is to what be. What is this not motherfucker's even, at? <laughs> not even to be a landlord, but to just be an approximation of one on Twitter. <laughs> Straight up, one of those people that says, "Actually, I think you'll find I am a lord because they've purchased a fucking certificate that says they are." Don't search his name because you just get a lot of porn gifts. Um. <laughs> All right, let me let me start reading. Even now, years later, I get a little flutter joy of thinking about it. I was in my uh, <laughs> I was in my early twenties and working for this newspaper on the property and gardening section. My self esteem was at rock bottom. I woke up one morning. <laughs> I, <laughs> I woke up one morning and rolled over to check my phone. As usual, the first thing I did, even before finding out why my mother had called me 43 times at 3 a.m., was to open Twitter. There it was in my notifications. Just <laughs> got that bullshit. What's going on on Twitter? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there it was in my notifications. Unmistakable. Verified. Followed you. In that, uh. in that second, I knew how lottery winners must feel. <laughs> <laughs> no. Staring. So was his mom deed? What was the <laughs> that's, that's what was the phone yeah. calls in the middle of the night about? <laughs> so, I presume it's to do with the verification. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, son, I always Ed, thought you Ed, were a failure. Ed, Ed, you've been verified. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Yeah, it's the same time. I called my mum 43 times as well to let her know I'd become a drop. It was also, that was the <laughs> <laughs> Staring at a few words that tell them their life will never be the same. I was verified. I had my tick. I'd had the tap on the shoulder, the quiet word in the hallway. I was chosen. Oh my God. I was chosen. <laughs> <laughs> I was chosen to be <laughs> to have brain damage willingly inflicted upon me. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter always kept the official line that the verified badge was just to denote users who were at risk of impersonation. Nobody was fooled. We knew what it meant. Our star shone a little brighter than the others. Our bluebird <laughs> chirped a little louder. <laughs> oh. All 140 character statements are created equal, but some are more equal than others. Oh my god. I'm sorry, this this motherfucker clearly has a lot of investment on, like, what's going on on Twitter and how Twitter functions. The character limit is 280, you clown. He does bracket it with later 280, but, like, it it flows better if you don't. (laughs) As I often tell my wife and daughter, it was the best day of my life. My wife and my daughter. Yes. (laughs) (coughs) I love to walk up to my children and say, actually, the day of your birth was kind of eh in comparison to me getting my phone. (laughs) (laughs) At 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 first, I didn't notice much change. (laughs) While the... (laughs) While the act of verification... Suddenly I was more virile, stronger, wiser than I was before. Mm, Bolder. (laughs) While the act of verification was immediate, its effect took a while to make themselves known. I wasn't sure how to handle this new privilege. Gradually, (laughs) I learned to walk a little taller to treat the unticked with a sensitive but firm hauteur. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh this is like this is like the Stanford prison experiments but for the most socially awkward motherfuckers out there <laughs> <laughs> S- 
since then, while the world has been up and down, I've always had that little blue check mark. The tick itself is white in a fetching blue casing, reminding me Not of my anymore, status. Not anymore, bitch. <laughs> 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 Imagine my distress when I read of Elon Musk's plan to charge $8 a month for verification. Twitter's current lord and peasant system for who has or doesn't have a blue checkmark is bullshit, he tweeted on Wednesday. Power to the people, blue for $8 a month. Then, a seeming change of heart. After a spate of people setting up fake accounts pretending to be George Bush, Tony Blair, Elon Musk, <laughs> Fred and Rose West, even. <laughs> no, those are all legit. <laughs> <laughs> Musk suddenly tweeted that he was reversing his decision and reverting to the old system. Or is he? The situation seems to be changing by the hour. Who would have thought that my coveted tick would become so controversial? <laughs> Move... <laughs> Move fast and break stuff might have been Zuckerberg's maxim in the early days of Facebook before they decided to go bankrupt trying to make the metaverse a thing, but it is Musk who has adher uh, adhered closest to this destructive ethos. First, he destroyed... Now you just break things, is it not? <laughs> <laughs> First, he destroyed NASA's fledgling rocket business with SpaceX. Then, he stirred up the benign automotive industry with Tesla. Now <laughs> the benign automotive industry. Yeah. <laughs> Famously benign guy, Ford. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how, how did the Volkswagen come... Ah, oh, never mind. <laughs> The joy of the blue tick is that it is discretionary. Historically, ticks were handed out not on the basis of followers, but on an arbitrary matrix of celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no merit to them. It's just completely arbitrary. Hell yeah. Being verified is a lot like waking up from the... <laughs> <laughs> Journalists were among the biggest recipients of blue ticks relative to their other status. Nobody is quite sure why. Cynics have suggested that this is because hacks are malicious, poorly paid and underworked demographic who love nothing better than holding strong but ill-informed views on things, which is to say exactly the thing that Twitter rewards. Well, I, would, I would say yes. I mean, that is exactly well, what it is. <laughs> Did someone else write that part? <laughs> <laughs> I prefer to take the opposite view. <laughs> Tw Twitter was one of the few businesses to treat journalists with the respect we obviously deserve. Uh, I is mean, this a fucking in a way? article? This is a bit. There's yeah, no way this is I, real. I can't fucking tell anyone. I don't think in so. A way, this is in fucking Bizaki. This is not in the Telegraph. Yeah. In a way, he is right, though, because people on Twitter do treat journalists with the scorn that they rightfully deserve. <laughs> oh god on the one hand it will let in lots of unscrupulous riffraff but it, it will force out the honest <laughs> newspaper men <laughs> no I'm sorry this isn't real you've been bad <laughs> <laughs> this is David Padil's alt <laughs> After all, if it wasn't for journalists reporting the unvarnished truth without fear or prejudice and thrashing it out in Twitter's marketplace of ideas, Britain and America would, might not be the flourishing democracies they are today. The world oh would my risk... God, can you imagine holding <laughs> yourself in such titanic self-regard? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's the British journalist Sorry. class, like, yeah. <laughs> The blue tick elite have policed Twitter for over a decade. To paraphrase George Orwell, everybody sleeps soundly because the blue ticks are out there deciding which opinions are good and which are bad. We quote tweet the tickless, sometimes adding yep or this, just so the original poster knows it has our imprimatur of quality. Oh my god. Just why are you just willingly admitting that they contribute nothing? <laughs> just like like reinventing the fucking empty quote of the 2000s era <laughs> some of us do this vital work at the expense of our actual jobs we do it on the weekends when we are meant to be cooking watching the children have we had thanks or payment no <laughs> this is a joke <laughs> 
<laughs> it could be. I like. I'm genuinely. I can't tell if this is a joke anymore because it is British journalists writing in the fucking Telegraph. Like I can't I mean, yeah, tell. It's still, it's still a fucking columnist for the Telegraph. So how much of a joke can it truly be, really? <laughs> yeah. Also, I am scrolling his Twitter timeline quite obsessively, and I can't. I'm, I, I can't did the tell. same. I did the same. <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> like this is I I read this as like this has to be a bit but then I read his timeline and I'm like I can't tell I can't tell if this is a bit anymore and I'm choosing to believe that it isn't it, it coming is an op yeah. <laughs> well, I mean or if you think about it all coming is an op um <laughs> it is no not November you're right <laughs> When we accept payment in terms of likes and blue ticks, we are derided as workshy narcissists. But if it wasn't for us, Twitter would have been the engine for good in the world. He might be the richest man in the world, but Elon Musk cannot afford to tick us off. <laughs> so there you go. That's, that's your dessert for today. <laughs> Beautiful. Empty calories through and through. <laughs> <laughs> I hated that. Uh, yeah, I can. This his basically his timeline is just too telegraphy. Like it's too difficult to know <laughs> to know if he's doing if he is doing a bit or not. I mean, even if he's doing a bit, he still works for the Telegraph, so like, well, it exactly. doesn't it doesn't forgive that crime. What the yeah, fuck? nothing ever, nothing ever will. <laughs> oh. I mean, to, to be honest, like, even if this is a bit, like, I can extremely well imagine that there are significant chunks of, like, the journal class out there in, in the UK who are like, it's it's so important. It's so important that I have my blue tick. I am the only, you know, person who can give verified information about what Grant Shap said in a meeting or whether or not fucking Dominic Raab is a bully, yes or no. Like, you know, the, the, the regard in which these people hold themselves is so fucking totalizing that I can incredibly well imagine that they do think that, like, I don't know, Jamie being able to pay for verification is just, like, letting in the tramps or something. Well, I mean... No. <laughs> I mean, the, the extent to which these people influence, like, public life is just, like, quoting press releases from malign entities just w with zero critical eye applied. It's... <laughs> Has anyone bought a blue tick to pretend to be John Sweeney yet? <laughs> let's, be, let's be fucking honest. This I'm guy's sorry, gonna I'm, do I'm, less not eating, I'm not eating like that. I can't do that. <laughs> This guy is going to do less less with his fucking blue tick than that guy that created Eli Lilly's stock price. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Th and that and the um, Lockheed Martin thing as well. Yeah. The true heroes of of, uh, of like Twitter's demise. Which Lockheed Martin thing? I feel like Lockheed Martin featuring too many Twitter main character arcs. Oh, someone someone made a fake made an, uh, an account at Lockheed Martini. And bought a blue tick, <laughs> and then said they were no longer supplying arms to Israel, Saudi Arabia, or America until they investigated reports of war crimes, and their stock <laughs> tanked. The, the only good use for this has been those things, and like it's not going to last anyway. So fuck it. Yeah. I, I mean, but Elon Musk has tweeted, "Twitter is all the news by the people for the people." So who can say what the truth is? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, just before we started recording, um, so, uh, like a Russian missile fell into Poland and killed two people. Oh, but oh, didn't cool. both Poland and Russia and Ukraine say that it wasn't? And then the US were like, yes, it was. <laughs> I, I don't know, but there's oh, people that obviously like fucking NATO dipshits on Twitter are calling for like nuclear war immediately. Mm. Yeah, did you um, see just... the Photoshop somebody did of Captain Poland with a handlebar mustache? <laughs> oh, no. I did not. But, um,. <laughs> Like, it, so if if you can still, I don't know, are, are they still selling blue ticks for eight dollars? Because we could well, we could very well be ship posted into the end of the world. <laughs> oh, uh, what happens if I can click we on Twitter along? blue? Let's check can it we, out. Can we buy a blue tick and in, like pretend to be NATO? Do that Ronald Reagan I thing of like? <laughs> I thought I would check a blue tick, um, so I've just went and checked uh, the smallest blue tick I could find, which is Oz Cattlegy. Um, he, he appears to be trying to stress that it's not deliberate, therefore it doesn't count. So he, even he's starting to realise, like, oh, fuck. Um, I did have the option 
for Twitter Blue on my phone the other day, but now I don't anymore, so who knows? Oh, Maybe yeah, I've been adding yeah. Elon too much. Uh, no, they, they <laughs> did take it away a couple of days ago. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, he's busy building the internet in space, isn't he? So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I've time for this nonsense. My my big my most favorite thing of like the last couple of days has been that he's like, yeah, um, most of the Twitter code is just bloat, so I'm gonna like throw out eighty yeah. percent of the teams who work on it, and now the two factor authentication doesn't work anymore. Yeah. Well, like technically the two FA still great. works, but like the little service you can't that get sends a text. you, yeah, you can't yeah. you can't get the text. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's been a uh, it's been an incredible week for tech geniuses with between like fucking. Uh, Apartheid lad and that fucking Bankman oh, Fried Sam guy. Bankman Fried. Which, yeah, yeah, yeah. The FTX yeah. Uh, crypto exchange dying. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. that was good. That's that was... right. Michael Lewis, the writer behind The Big Short, has been traveling with Sam Bankman Fried for the last six months and is writing his next <laughs> book on the FTX founder per Bloomberg. <laughs> You'd be looking over your shoulder, wouldn't yeah. you? Like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, hey, me, this guy like, made a great movie. <laughs> someone else has tweeted me noticing that the guy who wrote the big short has been hanging around me for six months. Is this good? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh no! Yeah, I mean that to be it was incredible. They uh, the the FT got its hands on like um, the the balance sheet of FTX in like its last hours as it like desperately trying to find a um, a buyer for its services. And it was essentially just like one horror show after another, including like it was just a simple Excel sheet, and one of the cells was called "hidden poorly internally labeled account." <laughs> <laughs> Was that, that the one? Was that real? That, Where one of them is really long and it's like things that I wish that I had done differently, but yes, I couldn't that one because was of real. my enemies or something. Yes, that was entirely <laughs> real. That was no joke real. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Incredible. And just, oh, that's so like, good. Yeah, also hidden poorly la- hidden poorly internally labeled account had a uh, uh, a negative 8 billion in val- value in the next <laughs> cell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this is I think, I'm just going to read a little bit. This is from uh, uh Matt Levine's buddy stuff. This is fucking incredible. Um let's see. <laughs> Uh, a spreadsheet listing FTX's international assets and liabilities, seen by the Financial Times, points at the issues that brought Bankman Fried crashing back down to earth. It references 5 billion withdrawals last Sunday and a negative 8 billion entry described as hidden, comma, poorly internally labeled fiat at account. <laughs> <laughs> In all, the spreadsheet said that FTX had less than 900 million of liquid, i.e. things you could sell and get actual dollars for, 5.5 billion of less liquid assets, mainly consisting of different crypto tokens. So, like, instead of being a bank where they keep some, like, measure of guarantees, he'd take it all the customer money and then put that into crypto. (laughs) To pay out. It can only go up. Yeah. Um, I would just like everybody to be made aware of the fact that um, currently, because that guy was a donator to the Democratic Party, yeah. that, um, the QAnon people are now calling him a pedophile king. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and this was all a this was all a scam. This was all a scam to to get rid of Republican money and give it to Hunter Biden because uh, only Republicans <laughs> buy crypto. Yeah. <laughs> Just so that you're aware of what corner of the internet I check first. <laughs> Something happens. There is also an obscure 7 million holding called Trump Lose. <laughs> that the money they spend on gold toilets. <laughs> no, I mean, like... I- I don't know. I will probably leave untangling this thing to like a TF or something because this is pretty much like the center of their wheelhouse, but it is fucking incredible. Essentially, he was just covering up the giant losses he was running in his own investment fund uh, by like just like taking consumer money out of the uh, FTX exchange. It's just, it's fucking incredible. They can't even like get the bankruptcy procedure started because they don't like the, the files are so poorly kept that nobody knows where the money is like even now when it's essentially at zero has he actually fled? 
I don't know. He was on his way to Argentina at some point, but yeah. Yeah, his private plane was on its way to Argentina, but then I saw something after that that he was apparently still hiding in, uh, was it Barbados? No, the Bahamas. <laughs> the Bahamas. But yeah, that's uh, so another another great week um, uh, in everywhere, essentially, but mainly in Britain. It's another great week yeah. for, you know, the very real world of both leveling up and journalism. Um, hey, and I look, think- say, what you, say what you will about Sam Bank... Bank- Bankwell Freed or whatever his name is, he achieved more than British Vault has. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One hundred percent. And bef- before we depart like the uh the arena of like tech fuck ups, give a big shout out to the Treasury's new Discord. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Which has apparently turned off uh, reaction emotes. Yeah, because people kept spelling out cunt with uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I think that'll that'll do us for yet another week of podcasting is uh, Praxis. Uh, David, mm. can you please do plug so I don't have to do it? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, well, first off, Lila, have you got anything you want to plug? Uh, nah. Plug it, Twitch. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'd sometimes, I was streaming in the afternoons, but I'm not this week. But next week, I probably will be. So you can follow me on Leech Waifu at Twitch. Um, and I stream 2 p.m. weekdays. Something to occupy yeah. the afternoon while you pretend to yeah. work. Yeah, I'm yeah. really bad at games, so <laughs> it's a really it's a really chill vibe, though. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I think you're going to struggle to top the uh, insane fucking demons incest game that you played uh, the other oh, week. Yeah, demon incest. Jesus is Satan. That one. That one was pretty <laughs> weird. All right, that sounds pretty good, actually. <laughs> <laughs> For more boring um, games, um, you can check out twitch.tv forward slash PraxisCast. <laughs> um, and uh, obviously the Patreon. You should join the Patreon and come and shout abuse at us in the Discord. And uh, yeah, get free free episodes to go along with the other episodes you get. Not free, you paid for them, but you know what I mean. Um, so you'll get one <laughs> bonus episode a month. Um, this month it'll be two. Don't get used to it. And... Yeah, um, merch is also available at praxiscast.tml.com. There's hoodies now. There's hoodies now because yeah. it's cold outside, so buy a hoodie. Um, yeah. Join the Praxiscast Discord and spell cunt on every message with React. You have my permission. <laughs> you should do that, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that was, uh, I think, that was it. You know, that's that your was lesson, it. Yeah. That was it for this week. Um, and we'll catch us again next week. Unless you're right. a Patreon subscriber, in which case we'll catch you sooner than that. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Cheerio. All right. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye.